broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar on hosting UCEA headquarters. Um, this is Monica Bern Jimenez, and I will be the main uh, MC for the next 40 minutes or so. Um, also with me are Tara Vinzant Chambers, our current president, Gerardo Lopez, our president-elect, and Michelle Young, who is our current executive director. We are going to go through a series of slides and at the end, we will have some opportunity for questions and answers. Um, so if you have anything that it's urgent, please put it in the chat and one of us will keep an eye on it. Um, and then if not, we'll just wait to hear from all of you at the end. So thank you very much for showing up um, this afternoon. We're really excited about the prospect of finding a new host for UCEA. Um, and we've been really um, thrilled to hear from all the institutions that have sent us um, information and questions um, and seem eager to put an RFP together. In this next 40 minutes or so, we're gonna talk about the purpose of this webinar and what we hope to get out, um, what we hope you will get out of this talk a little bit about the process uh, and the moving of UCA headquarters in a historical perspective so that we all know them, that this is sort of part of our work as, as UCEA, talk about the search process to date and what we expect moving forward, and then finally talk mostly about what it is that UCA is looking for from our host institutions, the kind of relationships that we want to build with your host institutions, and the benefits of being in a host institution, as well as looking a little bit more carefully at specific elements of the RFP. So really the purpose of this, and for those of you who were able to join us at one of the sessions at um, AERA, you'll know that we really wanted to make this process as transparent as possible. Um, we wanted to make sure that everyone who was interested um, or wanted to learn about the process had an opportunity to do that. Um, and so obviously we're going to be sharing a lot of information about not just the RFP, but again, sort of the, the context in which we're, we're doing the RFP. Um, we also wanted to invite everybody here in this discussion, as well as hopefully in your own programs, to a, to a conversation around what, what it would be like to host um, UCEA, not just for the benefit of UCEA, but for the benefit of your own programs. And we've been really um, excited to hear about the number of conversations that have been happening, that have been happening within programs around the possibility of hosting um, headquarters. We also really wanted to talk um, to encourage as many people, as many programs um, as possible to not only consider hosting uh, UCEA, but actually putting a proposal together. We actually think the fact that these conversations are happening within programs is already sort of a win-win for UCEA um, in the sense of, of having faculty come together and really look carefully about at their programs and what it might it take for them to host UCEA. And then lastly, we wanna have an opportunity to answer any questions that you might have so far. So just a little bit about the history of UCEA. Um, it was founded in 1954, um, early on in, in the movement for educational reform, and really early on in, in in the history of sort of educational leadership preparation. Um, we are currently up to 103 member institutions, mostly, um, I think 102 of them within the United States, but we actually have one institution that is outside of the United States. And then we continue to grow. Um, there continues to be increasing interest, not only in UCEA, but in becoming members of UCEA. So that's really exciting. And also an opportunity for growth, not just for headquarters, but for member institutions and program who might host UCA. Um, as you can see there, there have been seven host institutions um, during throughout the course of UCA's development. Um, Ohio State likes to pride itself in having hosted UCA for the longest time among any of those seven institutions. And as you can see, they, they spread pretty um, they're pretty spread across the country, and, and again, we want to encourage folks who may not think that UC would be interested in going to your state to really think about, hey, we could do it. Um, in the last time that we had a hosting, a search for a host, we had three institutions that applied, um, and ultimately we landed at University of Virginia. So the process as and we're actually in the process so far and you got hopefully most of you have already seen the rfp that's gone out through all of our social media and it's on our website 
um, this spring. As you know, the letters of intent are due at the end of this month. Um, we also wanted to make sure that you knew that a letter of intent does not necessarily mean that you're, you have to submit a proposal. Um, and similarly, if you're not, if you miss the letter of intent deadline, this means you can't submit a, uh, a proposal. Um, we have proposals due at the end of July. So we, you know, there's a two month window there for, for proposal development. Um, once the proposals are submitted, um, we have created a Friends of UCEA committee, which are essentially past presidents and administrators and faculty at past UCEA hosts, um, as well as graduates, past graduate students at UCEA host institutions. And the idea being that these people have a really deep understanding of what it takes to host a UCEA headquarters. And so we've asked this external review committee to look at all the proposals that are submitted. That from there goes to the executive committee and the, at that point the executive committee will make a determination of who the finalists are. Um, those could be between two and three institutions. Um, it's really going to depend on, on what the proposals look like in totality. Then we'll have our visits to the finalists in the fall semester with the, with the hope that by January of 2020, we'll have a host institution selected um, and an MOU signed uh, and all the negotiations that go into that by January 2020 as soon as possible in the spring so that headquarters can move in June of 2020. So it is a fairly uh, robust uh, process but definitely something that, that is doable for both UCEA and the host institution. So what is UCEA looking for? This was a, a big topic of conversation when we had our sessions at AERA. And one of the things that came up from that conversation was this idea of really having uh, a symbiotic relationship between UCEA and the host institution, as well as the program. Um, we really wanted to have uh, a, a, an interesting synergy or, or, or creative synergy really between what UCA brings to brings with it um, as well as what pro specific programs have to offer. And so we're really looking for you know things that also align with our mission and core values around improving uh, principal preparation, um, you know, equitable schools for all children, really looking at the nature of collaboration um, and, the, uh, and the possibilities for collaboration within the program, but then also with other, um, you know, potential units of the institution. It's really important in the work that, that we do at UCEA to sort of strengthen the collaboration among programs. And so we would want a program that, that is really open to collaboration. We're also looking for institutions that see the value and, and have some experience looking at policy across a different um, across different arenas. So not just national policy issues, but then also looking carefully at what local and state policy um, is happening and, and your interaction with, with policymakers at the local and the state level. Um, again, these are the things that both strengthen the work that UCEA does and are also things that UCEA can continue to contribute to in your program. Um, I think the other piece of it is really looking for uh, programs that see themselves as preparing the next generation of faculty and um, leaders. And that's really important um, that, that those faculty and leaders are again uh, aware of and aligned to UCA's mission and core values. So to the, to the degree that UCEA brings a certain amount of expertise in each of these areas that can help strengthen and, and develop a program and a host institution, we're also looking for host institutions that are primed um, to do this kind of work. It's also really important that everyone, um, that host institutions and programs understand that UCA is a nonprofit organization. And so it's an autonomous entity um, that works in collaboration with a, a host institution, but is governed by its own set of legal and fiscal um, you know, mandates because we are a 501c3. Um, the UCA is governed by the executive committee and the plenum according to our bylaws, as well as according to, to the, the, the guidelines for a 501c3. The executive committee is the one who actually reviews the executive director. So the executive director serves at the pleasure of the executive committee. Um, we manage our own financial affairs. We have our own accounting system and an auditing system that occurs regularly within UCEA. Um, and it's up to the executive director to 
to supervise and support all of the UCA staff. So it, it's very important that that host institutions and programs are aware um, of of these um, of our nonprofit status. So when thinking about um, UVA as a host, we wanted to share some of the resources that UVA had pre has committed to UCA over the years. Um, as you can see from the slide, the, the resources cut across four different areas, staffing, services, graduate students, and startup costs. Um, I think the staffing right now at UVA, we have three full-time staff members. Um, we have one faculty that serves as the associate director, um, and then there's the executive director, of course. I think one of the questions that came up at AERA was sort of the, the flexibility within that staffing. Um, uh, as, as, as the same with the graduate students, having three graduate students and one postdoctoral student um, or postdoctoral uh, position. I think that's one of the areas where, and we'll talk more about this later, one of the areas where um, specific contexts are gonna be a, a play an important role in how programs address the staffing needs and the graduate um, student needs. Clearly with services, you know, as if you were starting up a center in your, in your institution, there are elements of um, operating costs and access to university services and things like that that are really important. Um, similarly, uh, help with or support with moving headquarters um, and the suite um, and the space that's required there um, is something that UVA also contributed or you know to the to their um, and, con and included in their in their RFP. Um, and again, we can talk more about that if um, if there are questions later. Monica, I think it might be helpful just to point out on that last side that all of these things are not actually paid for by UVA. Um, we have this staffing in place currently, but the only pieces that are actually paid for by UVA are the following. One full-time staff member, a portion of a associate director half-time, a portion of the executive director 25% time, um, three graduate students 12 months, and the postdoc is actually paid for by grant funding. Great, thank you for clarifying that. Um, the next couple of slides um, I will leave to uh, Gerardo and Michelle to talk about what are the benefits of being a host institution. Great, thank you, um, Monica. Um, I think it's important, you know, um, given what uh, Michelle just described, some of the investments that are that um, an institution kind of puts into an organization, the kind of returns that the institution can get um from those um investments and i think that the returns to the investments are great um i think that the returns to the investments are are both um short term and, and immediate as well as long term and um and certainly tangible but there's also a range of intangible um, um benefits that that um, an institution gets and so um in this uh, particular section i think it's important for us to con just to explore what some of those uh, benefits might uh, mean and might be. If we can move to the next slide. Um, uh, I, th I think that um, there's certainly, um, as, as, as I was um, discussing, the benefits um, certainly ha are happening at, at, at a range of, of different levels. Um, both the um, university college institutional level but also um, at, um, uh, at, at, at the department level the faculty level the graduate level etc and because of those uh, of those um, uh, of that visibility I think UCEA certainly um, uh, lends um, uh, itself it's its expertise to um, for individuals to kind of um, Form a, a center of um, um, that's that's focused on quality leadership preparation, and uh, it provides a kind of nexus or a or a, or a hub for the kinds of um, really profound and deep um, leadership and policy discussions that take place that um, certainly um, kind of permeate the entire um, um, organization, and um, not just the you know the, the the visibility that that comes with it but also the kinds of conversations that faculty are involved in, the kind of projects that, that both faculty and students get involved in, all of that certainly um, uh, kind of culminate in uh, really great benefits to the host institution. 
one of the things that's also important um, is that UCEA does bring um, uh, recognized scholars to campus and really provides great opportunities for graduate students to attend lectures, to get to know individuals on a one-on-one -on -one -on -one basis, and also um, really um, sets them up uh, in, in terms of um, providing great research opportunities for, um, you know, uh, and being involved in research and, and those kinds of research and policy discussions. So that launches them on, onto um, professional careers, uh, whether those careers will be in, um, in academe or whether those careers will be back in the field. Um, certainly the, the, the kind of quality of student that graduates from, uh, from, uh, from these kinds of institutions certainly um, um, are, are, ha are much better off uh, prepared to face these um, these particular challenges, and so it's we do we do think that the um, that the benefits to the host uh, institution are far and wide. Next slide. Um, uh, along with that, um, I do, we do think that um, UCEA's uh, influence in the field is important. Um, the, it, it, the benefits to the again back to back to benefits that the organization gets with respect to being an influencer um, in supporting high quality leadership programs, um, not just in in the state but um, but across through other member institutions, really raises the visibility of of the of the host institution and being a leader in promoting and supporting. Um, and leading, uh, being at the forefront of um, high quality leadership preparation. Um, the policy discussions that, um, that, um, that we have um, as, uh, as an organization um, are um, not just at the, at the local level, at the state, uh, but also at the, at the state level and at the national level. And those kinds of policy discussions also um, bode well in uh, not just for faculty and students, but for the kind of visibility that a host institution uh, receives. Um, we are um, definitely um, also on um, kind of uh, getting involved, um, not just um, uh, have, have been involved, but are getting more, more involved in international um, projects and international research efforts uh, and in initiatives. And I think that those are certainly um, uh, also bring attention in that regard, but also um, the, the last way in which um, uh, UCEA benefits an organization is, um, is the, the kinds of journals and the, the promotion of, of high quality research that we do through our journals that certainly um, also um, uh, help in, in, in bringing that um, uh, national visibility to, um, to a host institution. Um, Michelle, would you want to take this this slide over? I'm trying to kind of get a, a sense for this. Sure. <clears throat> so some of the things that um, that Gerardo has already shared have been touched on here, but in terms of impact, um, UCEA has had a significant impact in these four areas: fostering quality programs. This is done in a variety of ways, including. Um, through the membership review process um, when um, institutions first join um, by subscribing to the Inspire Collaborative's um, uh, set of survey suites where we're able to provide feedback to UCEA programs um, on what it is that they're doing and if they subscribe to the graduate survey, um, how their candidates um, perceive their preparation experiences, and then if they use the leadership and practice um, how their employers um, perceive their, their, um, their practice and their preparation. Um, in addition, UCEA is a member of the National Policy Board, um, which um, works with CAPE to provide <clears throat> the Leadership um, Review Spa, um, which used to be called ELCC and has now been renamed NELP um, uh, to align with the new National Education Leadership Preparation Standards. Um, in addition to that, um, through um, projects like the UCA Program Design Initiative, or, um, uh, we have been able to incorporate a variety of UCEA programs in these networked improvement communities, really thinking through how to, um, how to change the nature of programming. Um, in addition, we've also been very engaged in setting quality standards. Um, UCEA was on the steering committee for the new professional standards for education leadership. 
Um, and then we chaired the effort to develop the um, National Education Leadership Preparation Standards. Um, <clears throat> In addition to that, UCEA also has a set of program standards, um, which are um, uh, provided to our members um, as our membership criteria, but also in um, a uh, um, publication called um, UCEA Institutional and Quality um, Program Indicators. Um, in addition to that, UCEA has been fostering research projects through a variety of different um, uh, ways over time, um, particularly around the area of leadership preparation research, um, starting with the Joint Research Task Force um, with AERA and ICPEL, um, also the development of the two research handbooks, and by sponsoring the development of the journal, um, the Journal of Educational um, uh, Journal of Research and e Leadership Education. Um, and then the final area is around developing future researchers. As many of you are aware, UCE has some signature graduate student development programs. The Jackson Scholars um, program is one. Um, the Graduate Student Council that UCEA um, hosts, as well as um, which puts on the annual Graduate Student Summit and a variety of um, webinars and um, resource provisions across the course of the year, and then the um, Clark Seminar. And we've also played an instrumental role in thinking about um, the difference between PhDs, EDDs, and master's degrees, um, and worked with organizations like um, CPED to um, take those ideas and make them a reality. Um, one of the things that's important for us to, to really highlight um, in, in addition to all the work that's, that uh, Michelle just described are some of the partnerships that, that we've been able to foster throughout the years um, in, in the areas of policy research practice and, and also in international arenas. Um, within the, 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 the policy arena, um, we've been, uh, uh, have had really great partnerships with um, the National Policy Board, with um, the CCSSO, um, the um, National Board for Professional Teaching Standards, as well as the um, National Conference of State Legislatures. Um, on uh, the research side, um, we uh, do uh, great work with Wa the Wallace Foundation, who has been just a, a, a lovely partner um, and a strong partner with UCEA um, through, uh, throughout many, uh, throughout uh, the years, and is really, that, that, that um, partnership has just gotten stronger um, and uh, has really um, evolved in, in, in very rich ways in which we're really bringing a lot of the, 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 the uh, work of, um, uh, of the Wallace Foundation into UCA, but also um, um, uh, UCA has been able to influence some of the work of the Wallace Foundation as well. Um, and so um, that partnership has certainly um, both uh, served us well um, on the research front. Um, we've done work with uh, CCSSO, um, AIR, uh, and the Council of Academic Deans. Um, on the practice side, um, the Association for um, Supervision Curriculum Development, ASCD, um, National Principal Association, um, AASA, um, are some of our, our key um, uh, practice partners. Um, uh, and um, uh, as well as um, um, one that's not listed, but I'm, I've just kind of thought about this off, off the top of my head, the MPBEA, um, or IC, I'm trying to remember the new, the new, the new uh, academic. Yeah. Yeah, ICPEL. ICPEL, thank you. ICPEL, definitely another kind of key player that that kind of bridges that research practice nexus, um, and um, and we've been having great conversations with them um, in in recent um, uh, throughout the in recent times, and especially throughout this last year. Um, on the international front, um, there's um, a, a Balmis. Uh, uh, um, We've, we've had a great partnership with Belmas, the Australian Council for, um, for Ed Leadership, and uh, um, the um, uh, Tanzania Council for um, Ed Leadership Administration and Management. 
So these are just kind of a, uh, just a, a, a sprinkling of some of the partners that we've developed and um, some of the work that's taking place both nationally and internationally. So as you can see, just the, the, the breadth of these partnerships really are providing us with really great benefits, um, not just to um, our organization, but can bring those benefits to the host institution as well. Um, in terms of um, uh, uh, program um, uh, issues um, and program development, uh, you, uh, some examples of, of what UCEA has been able to kind of leverage um, uh, or kind of what the presence of UCEA um, at these institutions. Um, they've at, U, at UVA, for example, um, the, the, the PDNIC, the uh, Program Design Network, um, was um, kind of uh, formed and and um, kind of took off, and it, and this is kind of a great example of some of the of some of the work that was being um, that um, that's being done by UCEA, that's being done by um, program faculty as well as by students um, uh, at University of Texas. Um, UCEA brought to bear some resources, and uh, and they were able to leverage UCEA's kind of um, a breadth of resources to leverage a uh, uh, or to to attain a uh, five million dollar principal uh, principal development grant. And so um, again, uh, you know, this, this UCEA didn't kind of cause this to happen, but the fact that UCEA was was present, they were able to leverage some of the expertise and allow these these kinds of uh, programmings to um, really take place and flourish while at these um, uh, host, host institutions. Um, lastly, I think we, we want to cover um, some of the publications that we that we have um, and that we host. Um, I mentioned those early on, but our three main uh, peer-reviewed publications um, are EAQ, uh, Journal uh, JRLE, Journal of Research on Leadership Education, as well as JSL. These are um, journals that um, really have um, are the the kind of bread and butter, the backbone of a lot of our of our scholarship and publications, but also really kind of um, shed light on the quality work that that we do in the field across very uh, lots of different terrains, research, um, uh, leadership education, as well as um, some of the case study work uh, that uh, JSOP promotes to really um, influ influence uh, quality leadership preparation. Uh, in addition to that, we have uh, we also host a, a, a wide range of different other publications. Um, we host the we have a book series. We have some uh, book partnerships with um, uh, a couple of different um, ed, um, um, uh, publishing uh, houses, um, and um, and we. Uh, publish some uh, books periodically. Um, we also publish a, a series of monographs that um, that we uh, routinely um, uh, uh, you know solicit and, and publish as well. But also uh, we maintain in regular contact uh, with the field via um, our our two kind of kind of day to day publications, which is the UCEA Connections and the UCEA Review. Um, Michelle, do you want to um, wrap this up? Sure. <clears throat> so at the institution, um, at the host institution, there are lots of opportunities for um, the host institution faculty and students to um, get engaged in a variety of different initiatives outside of UCEA specifically. Um, in particular, there are national service and leadership opportunities. Um, um, some examples would be um, Pamela Tucker, when she was the Associate Director for UCEA, <clears throat> served on the um, Joint Council for Educational Evaluation. Um, she also um, served on a, a project that UCEA and new leaders engaged in um, under the funding from the Wallace Foundation to develop the State Evaluation um, Toolkit that um, a, based on research provided um, states with guidance on how to evaluate programs in a way that would be helpful and not detrimental um, to high quality leadership preparation. Um, students have also had an opportunity to engage um, across, for example, AERA and ICPL um, and also to present in, in, um, in conferences um, beyond just the UCEA community. Um, students and faculty both have also been engaged in research and publishing opportunities um, as often as possible. We, um, we're um, 
engaging the UCEA fac faculty and students, but then also those folks who um, aren't necessarily um, directly involved in the day-to-day -day work of UCEA. Um, and the UCA program design initiative um, for, is one example um, in various um, uh, publications um, for the UCA review or um, uh, press releases and um, uh, policy briefs um, and a variety of special issues that we've put together. For example, most recently on the, um, the winners of the Educational Leadership Preparation um, Program Award that involved uh, UCA postdocs and students and, and faculty from UVA. Um, professional development, we also um, provide lots of opportunities for faculty and students to get engaged in things that UCA is offering, but then also things that bring and enrich the UCA headquarters staff. Um, the students have lots of access to resources, both those that um, UCA is able to provide directly, but then also just being engaged in this national um, network um, becomes really important, a bolster to people's careers. Um, Gerardo alluded to this a little bit um, in terms of the, the way that our um, graduates um, from UCEA and their host institution programs um, are able to uh, make um, make use of their national networks um, to obtain good jobs and then also have a variety of different opportunities. Um, and it also it allows the host institution to um, recruit faculty and graduate students. Um, it becomes sort of a, an, an additional um, um, asset to the institution um, when you're trying to attract funding as well as faculty and students. Um, just to pick up on that, um, some of the more specific benefits to student development, um, as I was mentioning, we engage students in, in the development of um, our initiatives um, in the program design network. Um, UCA headquarters students serve on each one of our NICs as knowledge partners. Um, they sometimes lead their own research projects. If anyone is familiar with the um, UCA um, <clears throat> policy booklet that we put together that was a 50 state analysis that was conducted by um, two of our former graduate students, Erin Anderson and Amy Reynolds, um, writing for publication. Um, this is sort of an ongoing um, uh, activity for students and then they're very much engaged in the conference um, and we always provide them with, an, um, with guidance on developing presentations and proposals for the conference. Um, and as I mentioned, they have opportunities for national service um, and that we do an excellent job of opening doors for national professional meetings um, and really trying to make the most of UCEA being at headquarters for everyone involved. I will say, though, that um, it's really important as you know, for those of you who are thinking about putting together a proposal, um, for you to be thinking about these things from kind of day one, um, as, as you imagine what it is that you would want to have your institution look like, you know, three to four years after UCEA arrives, you know, what types of things are you hoping for your faculty to, to have the opportunity to do? What kinds of things would you want your graduate students for, for them to have the opportunity to do? Um, and, and really think about that as you're putting together your proposals. Thanks, Gerardo and Michelle. Um, Tara, could you walk us through the elements of the RFP? I sure can. You want to go to the next slide? So I think this is a nice segue from what Michelle was just talking about in terms of, um, you know, now that you're making, if you've made a decision to put together a proposal, what are we really looking for? And the RFP that we put out um, discusses kind of a nuts and bolts approach to like what the proposal should contain. Um, and I'm gonna, but I'm gonna talk about in a minute just also some of the kind of intangible things also that come along with this. But in terms of what the RFP is actually comprised of, we are looking for a description of your program, um, how are things structured, Every institution, as you all know, is organized just a little bit differently, um, and we may or may not be familiar with your institution. So help us get a sense of um, how things are structured, what you offer, what kind of degrees you have, like those kinds of things, right? Also, what is the proposed relationship that um, 
that you have between your institution and UCEA, kind of along the lines that Michelle was just speaking of, um, but also some just st structural arrangements, right? Um, what would be your approach to staffing, um, to facilities? Do you have a place where UCEA would be able to be housed? What does that look like? Um, what kind of support services would be available to UCEA if it were housed there? We, um, although some program require program aspects like staff or graduate students or mm -hmm. associate directors are paid for by the institution and some are paid for by UCEA, um, they all are go through the benefit system at the university where UCEA is hosted. So it's obviously very important to get a sense of what benefits are offered there. That's something that we want to get a sense of as well as we think about who would make a good host institution. Um, we ask that you include a budget, a first year budget that we can take a look at. Um, and then the last two pieces here are just important to, to get a sense of how much institutional commitment is there is this something that your program is really pushing but um you know there's also really strong support from your college and from the university what kind of op opportunities might there be to you know with these different entities on your campus beyond just your program and then can you provide some tangible um explanation for that in the form of letters of support. So those are kind of the nuts and bolts aspects of the RF, of the proposal that you'll be submitting. Um, but then Monica, if you'll go to the next page, and certainly if you have questions about any of those, you should feel free to ask them during Q&A. Um, it's just kind of a 30,000 foot view. But when it comes to actually um, evaluating all of these proposals that come in this is where i think it's important to talk about what are the criteria that we'll be using to make the make the determination um so the first and most important thing is what is the commitment to ucea our mission and our values is there an alignment between how you're proposing things to be for ucea and the host institution and where our missions really lie right like is there an alignment there that makes sense is what you want to do in line with what ucea wants to do that's probably one of the most important considerations um, and then we're looking at the capacity of that institution to build collaborative relationships and we really mean that in a in a um, expansive way. We mean relationships with graduate students. We mean relationships with state partners, with um, in national policy conversations, right? Like, where, how can we create a really collaborative environment um, for this organization in many ways? And this is another place, um, kind of linking back to what Monica said on the front end of this conversation, where we're looking for you to to tell us how you're envisioning this. Um, just to a side note, just really quickly, in some of the AERA conversations, um, folks were asking, well, what are you really looking for? And, you know, is that not in an accusatory way, but just like help us understand how we can make a competitive bid. Like what are what are the what are the things you think structurally you would need? And while we have some answers to that, and we've talked about that in this call so far, we really are looking for these proposed host institutions to help us with that piece of it, to say, this is the way that we're thinking about this and would like to propose. Um, you know, that UCEA kind of look like this. Um, and that that's something I think would be really um, unique. We are also looking at the strength of your um, preparation programs and the research. That's obviously an important mission of UCEA has been. We expect that to consider, to continue. And so really making sure that there are those um, strong pieces in place already at our proposed host institution is something that we'll be using as part of our evaluation criteria. Um, the quality of staffing and material contributions, um, you know, uh, while other things matter, this matters a lot too. It's not very exciting to think about material contributions like file cabinets or, um, you know, the, well, obviously staff is really important, but some of these other things, but they really are critical to the success of our organization. And if anyone has had a front row seat at how UCEA works from the inside, you know how important these aspects of the proposal will be. So from very important things like staff to other things like, well, you know, are there gonna be copiers and things like that? These are things that we need to think about also, right? Um, and then also very important is making sure that we will be um, moving to a place that has strong university support. So that'll be another aspect of the evaluation criteria is, um, you know, what, what evidence is there that this is an initiative that is supported by the university at large. 
next slide. <laughs> okay, and some, some additional kind of considerations that we want to push you on more in this direction around, you know, it's not just for us to say what's important from UCEA's perspective, but really also we're wanting to hear more from you. Um, so that's what this slide is about. Talk to us in your proposal about the vision that you see for UCEA if it's hosted there. What is it that you as a program are trying to do and trying to build? And how does UCEA being hosted at your institution align with that? That's something that you really should think about and talk about in your proposal. We also want to hear about the expertise of your faculty. There are critical ways that um, UCEA has been in partnership with faculty at the host institution and at other, um, obviously at other partner institutions as well, but that's something that will play into our decision making too. Who's there and how can the faculty help um, propel UCEA to the next stage in its career? Um, we're also interested in thinking about areas of growth um, for UCEA. Um, and for the institution, but what, as you think about putting your proposal together, what are the areas that you think maybe UCEA can grow in and how can your, um, your institution, if UCEA were to be hosted there, really help us grow in, in ways that are important? Uh, and then, so this ties really nicely into unique features then of your program. And I think an example of this, if I wanna, if I go back to our conversations at AERA last month, we had some really nice you know, kind of um, imagining around this question as various institutions came to our listening sessions and asked questions. Um, for example, there was an institution from the West Coast that came and said, you know, we don't really have strong representation on the West Coast. And maybe that is something that, in, in, you know, maybe inadvertently we are, we are um, supporting that in some way, right? Like, are there ways that if we were headquartered on the West Coast, what opportunities would that bring to grow UCEA um, in that area of the country, which right now is a growth area for us? Um, it might be that your institution is very focused on state level po policy conversations, and that could be something that we really push on. Um, maybe you have a really strong international component. I know that's something that Monica is very interested in, and that's something that could dovetail. Um, you know, I know when we moved to UVA, one of the interesting aspects of their proposal was their proximity to DC and the opportunities that there were and then that became um, opportunities for us to be part of national conversations by vir virtue of being geographically close to um, the seat of power. So really think about what are things that are unique about our institution that UCEA would then benefit from, right? Not, as I said, um, when I started my comments, no institution is the same. There are really interesting and unique features of every institution. And I think that puts us in a really unique position as an organization as we look at what I hope will be lots of really strong proposals that allows us to think beyond just the nuts and bolts kinds of things. As important as that is, it's also really important to think about how well moving to this institution or this institution differently prepare us um, for the next stage in our organization's um, history. And I think that's something really exciting to think about. So I, I'm, I'm really strongly trying to encourage everyone listening to think about how can you present yourself um, in, in um, helping us think about what it would mean to be at your institution. Um, and then, yes, some key dates. Um, our letters of intent are due May 31st, the end of May. Um, and I just want to remind you that these are not intended to be really in-depth letters. We're just trying to get a sense of who's thinking about putting in a proposal. And as Monica said earlier, just because you put in a letter of intent doesn't mean that we're going to be trying to track you down later to get a proposal and vice versa. If you decide not to submit a letter and then something changes and um, you all decide, you know what, I think we can do this and you decide to put in a proposal, that's also fine. We're not requiring an LOI to be on file. Um, just in order to put in a proposal. So to keep that in mind, if you're interested in receiving copies of the MOUs from um, the University of Virginia and then the previous host institution, the University of Texas, we have those. I can email them to you if you wanna contact me. We also are um, in the process of setting up a box so that those can be, or um, either a box or something on the UCEA website so people can get access to those. But in the meantime, if you want them right away before we have that set up, just please email me and I can get those uh, right back out to you. And then just a reminder that um, 
the, the full proposals though are due at the end of July, July 31st. We don't expect to push that deadline back at all. So please understand that that's a hard deadline. We have this um, Friends of UCEA committee um, on, um, on deck to make these um, very time intensive reviews during that period right at the beginning of August and a tight timeline as uh, Monica address at the beginning of the call. So we do not expect to extend back those that July deadline. So just keep that in mind. And I think that's the last slide. We'll move here into questions, um, comments that people have, wonderings that might be digging around in your head. We're happy to, to talk about any questions. Monica? Yeah, no, thanks everybody. I appreciate the depth to which we've, we've shared a lot of information with folks. Um, I think one of the things we wanted to do was to give you a sense of not just what the organization does and how it operates, but also how that potentially benefits your institution. And we're aware that for many of you, um, it's, a, it's a negotiation with your administration around why bring UCE here. We wanted to give you lots of information that can help you answer that question in a really powerful way. Um, and also give you any support that you might need in talking to your faculty, to your programs, to your administration about the possibility and you know the, the great opportunity of having UCA um, as your neighbor. Um, so yeah, so if there are any questions um, at this point, let me just see what if there's anything in the chat or um, I don't see anything. I've been trying to watch. Okay. All right. All right. So yeah, so I guess if there are questions, do we um, unmute people? I think is everyone muted right now? Maybe there aren't any questions. <laughs> Marcy, do you have the ability to unmute everyone? Also remember that you can type questions into the chat. Okay, well, while we're waiting for questions, I have a comment I can make in the meantime. I just wanted to pick up on something that Monica said earlier about transparency on one of the earlier slides. Um, something we talked about at the listening sessions at AERA and also um, that I think is important to say here too is how important we're taking this issue of transparency. And um, by that I mean we have been talking extensively about what if we get, you know, proposals from institutions where there are EC members. So for example, MSU is, is on the call today thinking about um, you know whether we want to submit a proposal we may we also expect that the indiana university will um, submit a proposal and we have put a process that's part of the reason why we have the friends of ucea committee who will do the first intense cut of all of the um, proposals to make sure that there is this independent source um, going forward it also means that we haven't made final determinations about who will be on the final site visit review team in part because you know if MSU were to move forward then it wouldn't be appropriate for me to sit on that site visit but if we don't make it forward then I could those kinds of things but um, it is very important for to us to make sure that people understand that no one has an a, has an advantage in this process um, we don't want there won't be any favoritism and we've put a process in place that will ensure that none of that will happen I just want to make sure we say that on this call okay I saw something come up in the chat Yeah, so there's a question from Kat about who the friends of UCEA are. Um, I think I, I may have mentioned that they are past presidents of UCEA. We have, I think, about 12 of a uh, committee of about 12. So yeah. there's some past presidents that are not at, and none of the people on that committee, and, we, and that's why we're still sort of sorting it out because we don't want any host institution to overlap with anyone on that committee. And so um, we are looking at, as I said, past presidents, um, faculty and graduate students at, at former host institutions. Um, but again, if, you know, um, if MSU does uh, submit a proposal, we don't want anyone on, the, on that friend of, friendly committee to be an alum or, or, or have an affiliation with MSU. Um, so to that degree, that's that, that the actual people on that committee is still a bit in flux until we know, until we get the LOIs. Um, there was that, there was another question about how the LOI should be submitted. That's a very good question. Um, 
Should those just should those just go to headquarters, uh, Michelle? Yes, that would that would make sense to me. <laughs> Sorry, I had to unmute myself. Yeah, um, that's a good question, Kathy. We'll actually get something out about that um, more specifically. Um, uh, John has a really big question about what a healthy integration would look like between UC and the host institutions. Um, you know, what what's a, what would be a collaborative? What what should maintain autonomy? Um, Michelle, I'm not sure. Maybe you might be the best person to answer that. Um, sure, I'll take a stab at it. Um, so clearly there are certain things that the program has to um, do on its own, and there are certain things that UCEA has to do on its own. But there are also things that the two organizations have in common. So um, a good example would be um, the program review and improvement processes that have gone on at both the University of Texas and the University of Virginia. and um, you know, I've played a role in both of those as executive director, but also as a faculty member. Um, but then also, you know, we bring to bear um, lessons learned from other institutions, um, ideas from exemplary preparation programs, and and so forth and so on. So it's like the the resources of the of the consortium are brought to bear on this um, program improvement initiative. Um, another. Um, good example is um, we have um, we've been working with the Curry faculty um, to support um, <clears throat> some a speaker series here on grounds um, and the speaker series focuses on something having to do with uh, leadership or leadership development so for this example this year um, we jointly brought in um, Tony Breich to talk a little bit about um, leading improvement um, within organizations. Um, so these are just a couple of examples, you know, um, sitting together and writing grants together, um, working on a variety of different projects together, things that um, make sense to both the work and the goals of the organization, as well as the work and the goals of UCEA. I hope that helps. Yeah, I think that, that that's actually really helpful, Michelle. I think the idea too of, of sort of thinking about thought partnerships um, between UCEA and the host institution, um, and as the programs and the use and, and headquarters do become integrated, there might be new ideas about things in which UCA would sort of want to, if if you if so, there's something organizational or that UCA wants to involve other in other members in then that would be something that you see and sort of take the lead on. If there's something either internal to the program or even to the state, um, that would be something that the program can take the lead on with the support of the expertise that you see brings with it. Yeah. Um, I think there are a couple other questions. Um, right now, we're about making the PowerPoint and the recording available. Um, we have been recording all of this. We probably should have mentioned that sooner. My apologies. Um, and so we'll be having the recording available as well as the PowerPoint um, either um, through the UCA website. I think um, Tara had mentioned that we're probably going to use the website as a repository for this, for the recording, and for other information that you might need so that it's accessible to anybody whenever you want it. Um, so once that gets set up, we'll send an email out to everybody, and then that way you can access it and download whatever you need in your conversations with your um, with your program with your faculty and your administration um, there was a question about university support and what we're looking for um, yeah. I think there, my side we're looking at um, you know on the one hand sort of letters of support from um, we, we want to see kind of an alignment um, of support across the entire institution. Um, we don't want to end up, uh, and we don't want to put a program in a situation where, you know, there might be some some questions about about the relationship or some questions about, you know, the benefits or anything like that that might put either UCA or a program in a difficult position. So I would think, you know, um, uh, letters of support from from your obviously from your dean, from your chair, 
um, from other sort of academic um, officers that you've been in conversation with within the university. Um, I think, you know, um, in terms of if you want to offer support, if you want to make a, a, a statement that you have broad uh, relationships within the state, you might want to have, um, you know, letters of support from your district and state partners and things like that to sort of say, yeah, you know, we are really committed to this and here's some evidence of that. Um, um, yeah, can I just add to that really quickly? It might look different at different institutions. This is where you need to help us understand the um, the way your your organization your institution is organized. It very well could be that all of the support that is needed for this to go forward will come from the program and from the college. And the university really doesn't have anything to do with anything going forward except to say yes, this has our blessing, and you know and go forth and prosper. Other institutions, the university might be very instrumental in whether something can go forward. So it also is help us understand, you know, like we need the letters of support, but in terms of like how um, much support needs to come from the university itself, that that's also something you need to help us understand in terms of how the arrangement will be made. Um, um, there's a question, I'm sorry, go ahead, Tara. No, I was just gonna say, Michelle needs to leave, but if, Michelle, there's a question here about repeating the exact percentages or numbers of staffing that UVA contributed. Are you able to answer that before you go? Otherwise, we can. Sure. I mean, <clears throat> what what UCEA provide? I mean, what UVA provides to UCA, as I mentioned before, is um, a percentage of of my time, which um, essentially then en enables me to teach for the program and um, and advise doctoral students and and do service. Um, uh, serve on committees and, and so forth and so on. And then um, it uh, contributes half of the effort of one full-time um, faculty member. And really to get the most out of UCEA, you really want to do that. You want to have one of your faculty members serve as an associate director and you wouldn't want them to do that for less than half time because um, otherwise they're, they're really not going to be able to invest themselves um, in, a, in a significant way in any of the UCEA projects. Um, and then the three doctoral students really are necessary. Um, we divide the students' time, um, 10 hours of, of um, project work and 10 hours of research. And, um, you know, they, um, they can, <clears throat> they, they really benefit from both of those, but also UCA relies on them to actually kind of keep the, the engines of the organization moving forward. Um, and then the final area that the that the UVA contributes to is by providing um, a staff member. Um, you know, obviously UVA doesn't have to do that, but we, we um, UT did that and Missouri did that before, and that's I think what the executive committee would be expecting moving forward. And if the institution did not um, uh, support that for UCA, UCA would absolutely have to have those people in place. Um, we could not function without uh, without our project manager, which is Marcy Reedy, um, a uh, administrative assistant, which is currently Stephanie McGuire, and our convention and um, event planning person, which is Carl Gildner. Well, thanks, Michelle. I know you got to go, so yeah. Thank thanks, you. everybody. <laughs> Um, John had a question about if there are any other new initiatives in the work. Um, not, not at this point that I'm aware of, John. I know that our, our big initiative is finding a new host institution. <laughs> um, so maybe we can add that that list at the, you know, at the bottom of the RFP. But no, right now we don't have any big projects in, in the works. Yeah. But we're always ready to move on one. So if you have an idea, let us know. <laughs> All right. I see there's a couple questions about wanting the webinar. I would just or um, want, wanting access to the PowerPoint, like Monica said, just um, drop one of us an email and we'll make sure you get a link to it. I think um, we're actually at our time. Um, so I think, um, yeah, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out to any of us about what those questions might be um, you know in I think you know we might want to um, think about having another another Q&A session where you can just sort of drop in we don't know we'll sort of wait and see once the LOIs come in and what kinds of questions we have whether that might be a possibility 
Um, and as I said, once we have everything up into the UCA website, we will let you guys know so you have free access to that whenever and however however many times you need it. Yeah. Um, I would just add to that too that um, whether we do an open webinar like this again um, is possible, but it is also possible that if you want to set up time to talk with one or several of us about specific questions that you have about your own proposal um, to host and you know things that are specific to what you want to do we're also happy to set up a you know a phone call a zoom call something like that where we can talk directly with you for 30 minutes or whatever we need to do um, so just keep that in mind if you if you want to have a follow-up conversation specific to your organization we can also set that up at any time between now and july yeah, absolutely. Um, Gerardo, do you have any sort of final thoughts? No, the other thing that I did um, in terms of, um, I, I certainly don't want to leave, uh, leave uh, or, or you know, get off the, this call with, with the impression that we don't have anything going on. There's lots of things going on within DCEA. We have about a hundred different things happening yeah. at any given time. And so yeah. uh, in terms of major initiatives that, uh, that we, that we um, you know, I, I, I think you're, we're correct in the in the notion that we don't have kind of a, a significant thing that's that's happening right now. But you know, the the journal, the the conference, the um, a lot of our partnership work, our, our policy work is ongoing, and that's important for us to 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 know. And for you know, these are these are all things that are that we we've got um, going on at any given time throughout the year. Oh yeah, for sure. I think John was asking about new things, but yeah, we, because we've got our hands full with all of these other things that are you know yeah we we're uca is always rolling man we always got stuff in the in the pipeline yeah um all right so we are four minutes over thanks for sticking with us um as i said we will make this available as soon as possible both the powerpoint and the webinar um feel free to share the powerpoint with anyone in your program and in your institution if that's helpful for you and we actually thought about that when we were putting it together so we do hope you use that um as a way to to you know deepen your conversations around potentially hosting ucea absolutely so, what i'm sorry no i said absolutely sorry Absolutely. Yes. So have a great afternoon. If you haven't finished grading, we thank you even more for taking time out for doing that. If you have finished grading, go out and have a wonderful afternoon um, and we will be in touch one way or another. Thank you Woo! so much. Adios. <laughs>